Well, I received a parcel the other day, and in it was this very fine Hewlett Packard pulse generator. So it's time for another test gear teardown. This is the 8011 pulse generator from Hewlett Packard. It's got controls along the top here for pulse period. This tells you how long between pulses. And down the bottom here, pulse width, how long the pulse itself actually is. You've got buttons for selecting a kind of a coarse selection of pulse period and pulse width. And there's an analog control here that sets exactly what you want the numbers to be. Over here, we've got an, another analog control for pulse amplitude and buttons for course control. Uh, down here, you can set whether the pulses are positive or negative. And over here, you've got the burst feature. Now, this has actually got an optional extra feature down here. Uh, these thumb wheel switches are not available on all examples of the 8011A. Uh, this one's got an optional extra, which is switches to select how many pulses in a burst. It looks like you can do up to uh, 9,999 pulses in a burst. So there's an extra feature in this one that you don't normally get. So the question, of course, at this stage is, what's it like inside? Um, is, it, is it full of those reefer capacitors that are notorious for failure and letting out smoke? Uh, have we got anything in here which needs to be replaced uh, just looking at it visually does it have anything like um, burn marks in there someone's someone's um blobbed some solder on that and that's um seems to be fairly well stuck to the plastic it's a it's a vinyl coated uh, metal case it's a bit sticky to be honest there's sticky stickiness from calibration stickers that have been removed um there's also stickiness all over the thing so it could do with having these covers removed and taken down to the sink and given a bit of a scrub. Uh, but with the screws out, taking the ones on the bottom out already, this ought to just let go now. There it goes. Fantastic. There's half of it. And we'll just turn that round and get the other half on the other side so that we can see both sides of it. Come on, there we go. So now we can see inside the thing, and isn't that nice? It's um, got a couple of big capacitors there. These are Sprague branded, uh, and I think the date code will be on there. Let's have a look. Uh, yes, we have a date code on those capacitors, which is 8504, so that's uh, week 4, 1985. Um, a little bit heavy. Ah, there we go. Um, we've got some heat sinked transistors at the back here most likely the voltage regulator two more heat sink transistors here they're quite likely to be the output transistors that actually produce the pulse that comes out of the output socket there's normally a fairly powerful amplifier on that um, up in the corner we can see here this is where the main the main sockets on the back uh, where the mains comes in there's a little plastic cover to protect one's fingers when messing about in this thing and in fact, yeah, that that cover, that plastic cover extends all the way down. There's the mains inlet, and there's our answer about the um, the reefer capacitors. It doesn't have, by the looks of it, can't see any any reefer capacitors in here across the mains. These are X-class capacitors for mains suppression purposes. Oh, this is actually quite a hefty lump. Um, there is a mains filter on the back of the mains connector um, now that itself might be a problem I'll have to check that um, the main switch is lever operated from the front panel so there's a big long lever from the front panel back to the switch at the back where the actual mains inlet is and in fact all of the switches are done that way there's a plastic lever and all the switches, there's a row of switches, switches here, front panel here, and so to make up the difference we've got a lever. I've seen that sort of thing on oscilloscopes before, but not on a pulse generator. Nicely done. Uh, I believe this is actually the optional um, pulse counting board. So this thing uh, has got some digital chips on that count the pulses. Have a look at the 
manual earlier and you can see there's rows of chips on that thing um, so all of these boards incidentally they are gold plated all over and you can see the gold coloration showing through what is actually a kind of transparent solder mask so it's almost like a, um, a clear varnish as a solder mask but the gold plating shows through that quite nicely um, what else do we have over here there's those switches again you can just see the chips at the bottom there with the pulse counting circuit and another switch with a lever on i wonder if we can get a bit closer to that and see that little bit um a little bit better closer up there we go um so there is a lever here and if i push the button on the front just so that it changes modes there it goes The, the 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 cranked lever is operating the switch some fairly big resistors there fairly high wattage resistors um, still catching the light there on the gold plating very very nice um, as our power supply circuit and the big capacitor in the side here these are all things that need to be just looked at to make sure they're not bulging or anything like that these um these sort of things do sometimes uh, suffer just from age and so they may have to be replaced but of course we only replace them if they're actually faulty I'm not going to replace them um, if they're actually okay Let's move back out from there so there we have it really that's the the insides of the pulse generator the actual pulse generation circuit does look like there are no chips in there at all um, it's all discrete transistor. Um, oh no, there's there's a few few chips. What have we got? What have we got in there? There's a seven a couple of seven four TTL chips, just tucked away in the middle of the board there. So we have got some some chips, but most of it is all this is discrete uh, analog circuitry. Um, there's a 7470, there's a 74H53, and there's a 74S51. I'll look those up. Uh, heat sinks there, labelled thermalloy, on what I suspect are the two output transistors. And it is quite a heavy object. It, 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 it's got quite a big transformer in the back there, so it, it's quite rear heavy. Um, you've got some what look like some fairly precision capacitors here probably part of the timing circuitry this is what the thing is all about um, and really nice to see um, the, the main selector switches at the back here but they're under a cover so the, if you're messing about inside the thing it's a little bit safer so there we have it um, I will do another video at some point uh, showing how this actually works. I believe it does work. I did test it out briefly. The pots are somewhat uh, scratchy. They need a bit of switch cleaner on them. I suspect the switches could do with a bit of switch cleaner on them as well. Um, the pots themselves, the output amplitude one there is dual. Um, and uh, maybe hmm, that might be a sealed pot that might be hard to get cleaner into anyway that's for another day um that's as far as i want to go with that so there we have it the very fine hewlett packard 8011a pulse generator i've got another parcel coming should arrive in a day or two uh which is going to be another hp instrument so watch out for the next episode of test gear teardown where we're going to take apart a fine HP oscillator.